Hello and welcome to my first tutorial. Um, I'm going to be making the series for people who want to get into skinning but don't have the money to pay for an expensive program like most people use in most of their tutorials like Photoshop. So I'm going to be using a free program called Medibang Paint. One very similar to it, if not identical, is called Fire Alpaca. Most of the things I'm doing in this tutorial you can do in that program as well. Future future me here, so I will neglected to inform you guys or recommend you guys to pin the OSU folder to the side here. So I'm actually going to unpin this for demonstration's sake. So this will make things quicker and easier for the future of accessing different things when it comes to OSU. So for this we'll be just opening OSU. Alright, now that we have OSU open, we can just go to any skin we want and click Open Current Skin Folder. This will take us to the said skin, since the default doesn't really have a skin folder, it just go takes me to User. But go ahead and, and you can go to Skins, and this will take us to where all our skins are located. This is what you're going to mainly use, however, it's best to go and click on Local go back two folders and go to where OSU, OSU is completely. Just all of the OSU information and you click and drag it in between the little thingies on the side here. And it'll say pin to quick access, go ahead and let go. And it pins the folder there. So now when you click it on the side, it'll just take you directly to the folder where your skin exports are, your screenshots, your skins, all your songs, your replays that you exported, everything. So this is very handy. This is also where you'll find the repair OSU um, shortcut. If you need to fix something about your OSU, this is where you go. So this is everything related to OSU is in the OSU folder. So I recommend pinning it to quick access so it's easy to access at all times. So we're going to be starting off right away, going straight into it. We're going to press Control N or just go ahead and go to File to make a new file and make sure since we're making the cursor, we're making a cursor that is the simplest thing you can do at the moment with almost no skill. Set the size to 128 by 128. That is a very common size. That's the size of the hit circle in non-HD, but it is the HD or NHD size that can be used for the cursor. It can be any size you want, but for this demonstration, we're going to be using 128 by 128. Um... Right away, just go ahead and zoom in to, to its, so it's a comfortable distance, and set your background color to black right away. This we're going to be simulating what it'll be look, what it'll look like when it's being used in gameplay. Just go ahead and zoom in all the way. We're doing this because there's this thing called the circle snap tool in the top bar here. Normally, it will just kind of default up into the left side, but if you select what's called the vanishing point snap, it allows you to move a point. So if you press four and then six, which is kind of the hotkeys for this, it'll pull up the circle, it'll first hit the vanishing point snap and then the circle snap, and now you're able to move the circle snap around. So once that you ha once you have the circle snap set to kind of moving where you wish, place it in the middle, click so it's in the middle, and now just zoom out all the way and you'll see it is perfectly centered in the middle. Um, reminder, always skin in at 2x format. That is basically HD. There's really no reason not to skin in at 2x. The skins will look better. They'll be higher quality. It's just overall better to do it. Now, now that you have your the circle snap set up, as well as the background set to black, we can go ahead and get started making the cursor. So go ahead. I have a couple things here, like... I have a big pen, small pen. I'm just going to use a big pen here because it's quicker on my end. But set your uh, color to white and just click and drag around the circle. You can kind of drag anywhere. It'll kind of just follow around and fill in the circle. You can press E to grab the eraser or just use the hotbar on the left side here. But just kind of get the size you want. I'm going to go with a size like this. 
And now, once you have the white cent center area, you can go ahead and create a new layer using the Add Layer button on the right side. I have my own special layout. Yours will look a little different, but the layer's still on the right side. So go ahead and click it. Now, I'm going. we're going to be making a common cursor. I'm going to be using blue for contrast. So I'm just getting the brightest possible blue. You can use whatever color you like. It's completely up to you. Just kind of just do what I do when it comes to... Uh, the thing just kind of have fun you know get creative so now that I have my blue color set with the new layer selected draw around the white and fill it in once you have it filled in you'll have two different layers one with the center white area and one with the, the blue area go ahead and click and drag the blue area below and if you really wanted you could stop here this could be a standalone cursor but we're gonna be going for an effect that is used very commonly on most uh, common uh, cursors and skins so we'll select layer one we'll highlight and select it go to the filter tab up in the top left and go to the Gaussian blur go ahead and click it and give it just a tiny blur like since we're at such a small size one or two is should be enough I'm gonna go with two you can go with whatever amount of blur you want, but for this demonstration, I'm doing Gaussian Blur Level 2. Now select Layer 2. Go ahead, go back to Filter, go back to Gaussian Blur. Give it, I would say, just a tiny bit stronger. Not very much. You can even keep it at the same one. I'll go ahead and give it a 3. You can actually, at this point, get rid of or deselect the circle thing, circle snap, by going over here, either pressing 1 or the snap off button on the top bar here. And this is kind of what you're going for. This kind of this glowy look, you know? It'll look a lot better when it's smaller. Now we're actually going to be making the cursor trail. And this is very easy. You can just go ahead and select layer 2 and duplicate it. Don't worry about that. We can actually deselect these two items and make them disappear and select the one we still have available. Now press Ctrl and T and that will open the transform image. This will allow you to do a lot of things if you have the option set like stretch it very weirdly. Kind of just do a bunch of weird stuff but for this demonstration we are only going to be using it to decrease the size. Just go ahead and click it, shrink it, Shrink it enough so you, it's a sizable difference between the two. And give this another blur. Give it kind of more of an intense blur since it is the cursor trail. It is not the body, so it's going to be kind of more poofy in a way. So now that it's poofy, you got the two items. You can go to View and down where it says background color where we were, you can select transparent background. This will allow us to export the file as transparency or a transparent file, which will allow us to use it in the game. Now, if you go to file and export, we'll just export it directly to our desktop. I recommend setting a folder aside at the beginning to do so, but you don't have to. I recommend it, but for this demonstration, we won't. So, with the cursor trail deselected, go to Export, Transparent PNG, Deselect Fits Following Size, and Change Resolution. And name it Cursor at 2x. At 2x basically means it's HD. So, with that is the file name for the cursor. So just go ahead and click Save. Now, we deselect the, hit, the cursor and turn on the cursor trail. We just go back to export. The setting should have saved. And now we do cursor trail at 2x. So now that it's cursor now that we have that set, we can go ahead and click save. And so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to be go putting this in an existing skin that I have just to kind of have like a base on so it's not just the default skin so I'll be using a slightly edited version 
of the silly fangirl skin that I kind of had the had liberties of just kind of messing around with. So I will take the files that I have right here, select them, and just drag them in. I deleted the cursor ahead of time for this. So now that we have that in, we can close both of these and open Osu. I can we can go to the skin that is selected, the silly fangirl skin, and we see we have the cursor. I currently have mine set to the maximum size, so let me set that to what a, a more common size is. This is how big it would be in game. You can adjust the size in the image or in the cursor size. It is completely up to you. But for this, we'll just set the cursor a little bigger, just so it's a little easier to see. And this is how it looks like when it'll be used in game. You can use the, this is the most common style cursor or that you can make. And it's also one of the easiest. So this should conclude our first, my first tutorial. No and uh, next episode, I'm actually going to be making a hit circle and hit circle overlay and going through that. It might take a little longer since it isn't as simple as this, but I will try to make it as quick and as simple as possible for newcomers. So thanks for watching.